Hey there, uh, my name is Eugene, and in this video, we're gonna talk about accessibility identifiers for iOS. Stay tuned. But before we jump into accessibility and accessibility identifiers, I should say, my name is Eugene, welcome to my channel. I talk about software development and software quality, how to make your product better and how to make yourself better and how to get the job that you really, really want. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that bell notification button so you get notification every single time I post a new video. Stay tuned! Well, hello there and as I promised, in Today's video, I'm going to talk about accessibility identifiers. So, uh, let me just quickly introduce to you my little app that I'm working on right now. So, this is my app, uh, my personal project. I'm just trying to do like different things with it. And as of right now, nothing is really going on. Uh, but we see those buttons on the on the bottom, like right here, on the footer. And uh, if we look in the code, uh, these buttons are subviews. And uh, each subview has an image and it returns as, it, it, is an, it, it is an array of images, but it will return as a button. So each button will have an image to it. So, uh, and uh, in my variable, like right here, I, I'm implementing that it is accessibility element, so it is accessible. But um, if I run my application, it runs just fine. Let, oh. So it runs just fine. However, if I want to implement UI tests, for my app and for that I will go to XUI test and in the XUI test as Apple says try to record your actions and see what XUI test does so I will try to record my action and for my actions I will try to click to tap on each and every button and as of right now if you look at the code it's not as pretty and that query doesn't really say much and the code is not really clean it's huge it's enormous so and it's a little bit confusing it's not it's definitely not readable and uh, we we can uh, implement that code in our test so if I run it it will it will run and I don't think it will like it will do anything wrong and I think my test will pass so yeah like it will tap on my buttons but the query is not as accessible so i'm not really happy with how xui test finds those elements so and for better identifier i will go uh i will go right here and so uh, what do you need to do for that because it is an array i will say sub views uh and i will put um uh index for my element that i'm trying to access and i say accessibility identifier so let me just uh, give me a little bit more space and I will say it is refresh button. So it is a refresh button. So uh, just like that. Um, and I will do the same kind of thing for the rest of my elements. So let's talk about naming. So for accessibility identifier, you can provide whatever name that makes sense, That, but your name should be unique 
for that screen. So if you name your accessibility identifiers, let's say name two elements by the same name, it won't really work really well and XUI tests will get a little bit confused about what you're trying to find on the screen. So I highly recommend to name your IDs uniquely and so you can find your elements easily. Another thing to notice that I provide here um, all capital letters for my accessibility identifiers and for the reason because um, it's just a best practice in the industry and if you work with localization uh, so you don't wanna you wanna um, see your identifier uh, accessibility identifiers very clearly and so it won't the library won't translate your uh, uh, accessibility identifiers to another language so Anyway, it's the best practice in the industry to name your accessibility identifiers just like that. And in the code, it's really clear that those are accessibility identifiers and you can spot on them really, really easily and really, really quickly. So, so enough of theory, let me run my application one more time and I'll show you what it actually does for our UI test. So if we go back to our XCY test and I will try, let me get rid of extra space here uh, and if I try to uh, record my actions one more time, now it looks the whole lot better. So now my query is all is more concise and more precise and uh, it just looks better and the code is more readable. And it, let me see, yeah. So, and it's interesting, like uh, it, like it provides you other name like here too. So, um, but anyway, with accessibility identifiers, you are able to grab your elements a little bit better and in a little bit more reliable way. So, um, when it comes to accessibility, you might be wondering what accessibility ID actually does. And will I hear it or will it make difference in voiceover or anything like that? No, it won't. Accessibility identifiers are strictly for UI testing and to make your element more identifiable and so you, you can work with that element in your test. So it doesn't really affect your accessibility settings or accessibility implementation. So um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you. And let me know if you have any questions and let me know uh, if you work with accessibility identifiers and accessibility. So I really look forward to hearing from you and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.